What is a precursor for being real as a human being besides them being different from those around them inherently? Follow-up question. What is a precursor for being a good, relatable character besides them being human, being different, being relatable, and different inherently? No two traits are truly mutually exclusive. No two traits cannot intertwine if you're a good enough writer for the challenge and i've gathered a handful of songs that i think say something about this topic but what is this topic really if we're here to speak of the power of specificity it only makes sense to specify a name for the device at play namely qualifying qualifying is tricky i was always told it's an option but beware it's tricky and it might not be worth the risk like eating a skittle when one of them is poisoned but you look at the skittle for argument's sake we'll say it's a green one you can taste it and you're unsure if your mirror neurons know something or your mouth is moving on its own like it's already on your tongue someone in hotel de luna says a remedy can also be poison and i think i agree i know i agree because i really would like a green skittle but i'll save that desire for later there are more important ones to conquer it feels like you've conquered something when you feel you understand it, but that's not really the case for long, ideally speaking. There's always more to discover, and I think that's definitely true for me as a quote-unquote discovery writer. I can feel like I've written something well, but my brain runs so that I never run out of new bits and pieces of context. Nothing comes to me fully formed, and maybe nothing is ever fully formed, and I like it that way. I don't conquer things, I soak in them, and I get to do so all the time. Qualifying is this. This remedy heals you, and it poisons you, and it's worth it. It's giving dimension where something lacked the nuance previously. A character without a flaw is a failure, but in my opinion, there's one flaw every character needs. Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy is essential in terms of conflict, external, and more importantly, internal. It's the source of questioning, and in some way we all have it, at least as far as I can tell. I think, therefore I'm a hypocrite. No existentialist can live the existential ideal by definition, and that is so interesting. But I'm not here to talk your ear off about existentialism specifically today. What are some good examples of qualifying in K-pop? If you did not see the Eyes One vs. Kepler video, I'll get the gist of Love Yon Rose out of the way now. They take ownership of what they call their Love Yon Rose, refashioning the original Life in Pink into their own idea of a life in red. It's taking a well-known title and interestingly changing it without letting go of the original wording. We know the illusion is intentional and we have to grapple with what that means. Another example would be Funny Valentine by Misamo. Specificity in writing, in my opinion, demands specific attention that can bring you into the piece. This odd way we're talking about here where you see yourself so clearly and someone so inherently different. This song is dedicated to that purpose, to providing access to this speaker's life. After all, they start with the idea of a moon night, setting it apart while it ends in altering moon night because every day is valentine they also set things apart with a distinct lack of parallel structure it's honestly not even clear if it could count as a use of epistrophe they exist in all these contexts end all be all at the end of sentences and not at all because they constantly add things on then saying funny funny valentine is sort of satirical saying it's genuinely funny and odd in that way they also contrast always pretty directly with iterations of for now in the exact same verse there's also the line those eyes seem so honest honest and specific but unfamiliar and seemingly stated from a certain distance and they say you're on my mind since present in that moment but clearly more so from infatuation than something that will last much longer they go on to say you stole my heart and i gave it to you calling into question what it can mean to steal and what it can mean to give these words take on new meanings under certain writers and characters tutelage moving on we have to look at batty i know it's surprisingly pretty complex the song itself isn't meant to know that though there's a sense of monotony both sonically and within the way the song is written the lyrics they utilize the rule of three and reiterate simple commands the title is taken directly from the content of the song and while this isn't abnormal the song actually qualifies the term with other characteristics pretty little risky and the like and the title does not the title is a pretense to escape without losing that part of their identity they're forced to live within this context but expand their reach to elude the perceived rules of the situation they are searching for the secret cookie the common reason for reading a scene in a sea of monotony and a song with a strange and repetitive structure 
Highlight by Eyes One also qualifies. Highlight has in mind that music is different when you're different, making you the hell that is judging, looking at them, the sunlight, prompting them to awaken, or blue moonlight that bids them good night. Regardless, they go their own way every day, and the speaker caters to whatever hell it is you could also bring, begging for the judgment while also assuming a higher state of mind through their specific approach to life with their high highlight. Sargras by La Seraphim has a distinct intention to communicate through dialogue as well as subtext, metonymy, and synecdoches. They are not presenting forbidden fruit as if to tempt you, but the consumption remains inevitable despite descriptions of dizziness from one direction and another seemingly perfectly opposite as well as this apparent fear. It's similar to Camus the stranger with the speaker's inability to know why they do what they do. Actual motivation remains a question rather than a device, but regardless, much like in the Garden of Eden, it seems you are taking someone else down with you. Talk That Talk's speaker maintains their insistence that people speak in their own words or perhaps looks, even as they feed the subject hints at what specifically they want that talk the subject must adhere to and then ideally refashion. The speaker cannot clearly say what they want, just hint here and spell it out L-O-V-E there, but they're pretty much in the same boat as Orpheus or Lot's wife, who were not meant to directly look back and consult their state inward but strictly forward for them to look too closely upon others fates prevents one from taking action at all as owning initiative is what those at bay perceive as a good thing the weight of their given situations are obviously different but the expectations set upon them map out similar dilemmas as the speaker even references older twice songs these foundational tales of their own literature the speaker simply does not have supernatural aid or attention and must pace themselves however they may struggle doing so and it means the best they can do is to say to talk that talk but they can only let you insert your given thought process your chosen illusion within that talk it allows the crazy to come out of onlookers like me while the subject still seems clueless young dumb stupid notably states they want to take a step further egging on repetition but not always with it with the rule of three to which we are accustomed to and take comfort in they urge the world to not adhere to the typical conventions of stories and their structures as they say not a moment can be predictable they know themselves and knowing yourself is knowing your hypocrisies like the beginning and climax can go together and be one even if it should theoretically debase the flow and function of a story they are young dumb and stupid and they're throwing shit at the wall and something will inevitably stick in this curious manner it's a remedy it's a poison and it's worth it to create something truly great to create the pieces of an identity of someone in their own essential world